Now, the fact that you are not in your sovereign status means that you make a contract as a minor. They don't care. They know you are a minor because and, and to be other than a minor, you have to be in your proper person at law. And how we write that is this. Can y'all see that? Impropria persona. Impropria persona. When you are in your corporate ward status, you look like this to the court. Pro se. Pro se meaning they get you in the court and they bring someone in called a pro se cuter, a prosecutor, because you're in a corporate board status. Now, if you're in proper persona, say in their criminal allegations, the prosecutor cannot come into the courtroom and say anything to you because you're not in pro se status. Makes sense, right? The issues of law, the issues of law are threefold. The issues of law are status, jurisdiction, and adjudication. The first thing that happens when you walk into a courtroom in your corporate ward status is that they already make the assumption that you are a ward of the state and that you don't know any better. So they immediately start adjudicating you. As much, the first thing that happens when we walk into a courtroom is that we place our status on the record. On the record. We come in with our flag. We come in with our treaty, we come in with the Constitution we signed with them, and understanding that the Constitution is a contract. It's a contract between who? It's a contract between the United States Republic and the United States of America. But there are certain clauses in that contract that apply to Moors, which takes us back to the Treaty of 1787. But that contract between the United States and the United States of America does not apply to us other than that part that discusses the treaty. So it's not relevant for us to go into any courtroom and argue about their ordinances, their codes, their statutes. The only thing we're in there to talk about is, have we violated the treaty? Have we violated that part, which is Article 6 of the Constitution, that applies to us? That's the only question in the courtroom. Because the status of the individuals looks like this. You and the judge. There's nobody else that you need to discuss anything with in the courtroom besides the judge. The prosecutor is invisible to you. Now, what do you have to say to that judge? My honor, not your honor. What is your status? What is your name? What is your nationality? All right? And do not let them get away with saying, I am a U.S. citizen. Uh -uh. You cannot be a citizen and sit a bench. You cannot be a member of the Bar Association, which is a private, nonprofit corporation that issues registration numbers to its members who do not have a license to practice law in any state. Because in order to have a license to practice law, you must have your appropriate, proper person. And in order to be in appropriate persona in this country, whether that be North America, Central America, or South America, you must be a Moor. If they want to be sovereign, they've got to go home. They cannot be sovereign here. The next issue of law is jurisdiction. Now, let me stick with status. What is the status of the prosecutor? What is the status of the district attorney? What is the status of Lynn Abraham? Does anybody in this room know her nationality? I don't. That's an important question to ask her if she serves me with any papers. Wh who are you? Where is your license to practice law? Where is your proof of naturalization in my land? Who gave you the authority to be here? Right? Who issued you authority to act in any capacity to file any complaint or any charges against anyone? That's the question. And I say to you, she can't answer those questions, right? So then, if you walk into a courtroom 
and nobody else has the status to be there automatically challenge the jurisdiction of the court. There's nothing else that you need to say. There's nothing else to be said. Stand mute. Let them proceed because guess what? They cannot proceed. You have a question. How do we make them honor that information that you just passed on to us? In the courtroom, as I have learned because I've spent a lot of time there, right? There is a language of silence. After you've said what you need to say, don't say any more. They will do the rest when you stand on your square. That's all you need to do. There's no need to stand there and argue with the judge and judge, and trust me, I've done that. <laughs> all right? And once you say what you need to say, they know everything else to do, but understand. They do not want you exposing the truth to their corporate wards because every slave that you take out of their corporation, they lose money. This is making business. So don't go into the courtroom trying to expose the fraud. That's not your job. That's not why you're there. There's another venue for that. In that courtroom, because understand it's not court because it's not law. And I'm going to get into that in a few minutes. So don't try to challenge them on the law. They already know that. They already know they don't have the proper status. They already know they're operating in your land fraudulently. All right? Just say what you have to say and back off. They will give you the window. And it's up to you. If you are educated enough about the law, you'll see the window, you'll recognize it, and then you'll be able to walk through it and walk out the door. But if you're not conscious, when they open the window for you, I'll give you an example as I gave in class just a few nights ago. Uh, went into the courtroom and the judge has papers there in front of me and he's just arguing with me, young lady, you'd better come back here. I'm gonna send all these officers I have at my disposal with guns to hunt you down and bring you. And he's just running his mouth. And the prosecutor slides me the paper to sign and the, it was blank. Do you understand? Do you understand? So, I sign the paper because I know how to sign contracts and not be obligated to them, right? So I did that, signed the blank piece of paper. They took a copy, I took a copy, and I left. And I never heard from them again. But if I had stood there, as I shared with class, and I have done this, this paper is blank and I'm not signing it, and, right? So all I had to do was come into the courtroom and say what I had to say. Now, I know how to present myself in the courtroom, Islam. Right? And see the window and walk out. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, the next issue at law is jurisdiction. We already know they don't have the status. Now, do they have the jurisdiction? The answer is no. Because in order to have jurisdiction, you must first prove status. Everybody in the courtroom must have status on the record. Why is that so important? Because unless their status is on the record, what, what country do you represent? Says what law you're here to um, get justice on, right? Now, if, if you have not clarified the status for the record, you can't bring your law into the court. So there can be no court. So status is very important. And so it... If, if you're more, and let's say somebody else is Manchurian, and I'll get to that in a minute, when you have two people of different standings in the courtroom, you have to decide what law applies. Is there a treaty between the two? Do they have a constitution? Do they have any other trade agreement or contract that binds them and obligates the parties? That's the question. All right? So if you walk into the courtroom and they immediately start adjudicating, you have no idea what law they're using. And I guarantee you, because status has not been established for the record, they're not using any law that applies to you. And they're not using any law that applies to them. They're simply using corporate policy, which is discretionary. If they like you today, they'll let you off. If they don't like you tomorrow, they'll give you some time or a fine. Okay? So status and then jurisdiction. Jurisdiction is going to determine what area, what geographical area encompasses the authority that that judge or that court has. 
All right? So if you're in a municipal court or a court of common pleas, don't go in here talking about the Constitution because they don't have jurisdiction to discuss the Constitution with you. Do not go into a state court discussing the Constitution unless it's the state's Constitution because the United States' Constitution, they have no jurisdiction over, but they won't tell you that. They'll dismiss the case. Different jurisdictions. And don't go into federal court talking about city ordinances. You understand the difference? Okay. Jurisdiction. Then adjudication. Once you get to the part about adjudication, you have to ask the question, do you understand the law that applies to you, that applies to this matter? Because there's two types of jurisdiction, jurisdiction over the matter and jurisdiction over the person. All right? Does the court have both? They must have both in order to proceed. They don't tell you these things, but this is very important. So if the court has gotten to the point of adjudication, all right, which for me, I don't have that problem. But once the court gets to the point of adjudication, then they're ready to start prosecuting. They're ready to find you guilty of something, some kind of way. And the reason for that is because it's a business. And once you enter there and they seize jurisdiction over you, they adjudicate for the sole purpose of getting some money. That's, that's the bottom line. They don't care about you, whether you're innocent or whether you're guilty, none of that. How much money are they going to get out of this? And, and their little club that they have called the Bar Association, their members have to be fed. So they want to make sure that this one gets fed and that one gets fed. And that's fine because that's their corporate thing. That's the way they make money. And if they're going to make money being deceitful and all that, that's the karmic baggage they've got to carry. But you don't want to be a participant to it. That's all.